Hey everybody, Tony D. Uh, with another hot take. This one's on comics and YouTube. Um, again, I have to uh, put out this warning. Uh, not that anybody's going to listen to me, but I feel like the anti-woke, which I consider myself a member of that sort of subgenre on several of my videos, um, again, we have to be very careful. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of coverage of the same things over and over again. And I'm really not seeing an evolution of what the next thing is. I'm just seeing complaints. I'm still seeing complaints about uh, the new New Warriors, which is, to my mind, over. Uh, they've actually, Marvel's actually put up more cringy videos, if you can imagine. They're terrible. I, I, I don't know why these people, these people are living in a fantasy world. <laughs> I, you know. There's there's a there's a video now up about the looks of Loki, and uh, you know it's done. It it it's like somebody's somebody's cool mom decided to take over the comic book company and make videos. Oh, let's do about Loki's looks. That'll be fun. Oh, let's get so and so and so and so, and we'll sit there and you can make jokes. Oh, but not too racy jokes, but jokes. That's what it feels like. It feels like. Uh, Marvel is being run by somebody's like, you know, some mom who has two kids. They're young kids. They're like six and seven. And uh, she's just running the whole show right to the ground. Um, they're still covering Heather Antos, which who is still shooting her mouth off on Twitter. I don't know why. And then almost immediately after, it's interesting. A lot of these people, they'll shoot their mouth off. And I guess they must get blasted by somebody in the background like, Oh man, why'd you why'd you do that? You're getting so many negative comments, or maybe they finally get inundated by so many negative comments. Even she realizes she has to back off, and she started posting like happy videos of stuff. And look, I do not blame the comic gators, the yellow flash, the quartering, and all these guys. I don't blame them one iota for reveling in this. I don't. However, that being said, uh, and I think they should. Keep, keep that out there to keep these people on their toes, these certain particularly woke criminals, I'll call them. Um, however, we really got to start looking to the future, and I'm not seeing the future yet. And that worries me a little bit. The future of comics and the future of, this, of YouTubers, really. I mean, even Sargon of Akkad seems to be really digging deep to find things. Uh, a lot of guys who do movie stuff are, are in trouble, I think. Um, the Critical Drinker, who I'm a big fan of, uh, he finally came out with his version of, uh, or his take on Gotham High, which is really good, by the way. You should watch that one. Um, however, I just thought, wow, that's, that's been a few weeks since Gotham High. Like, he's, he's run out of movies, too. I mean, I've kind of run out of movies only because I'm worried about getting flagged by, by YouTube. Um, which, by the way, I'm doing the uh, screenwriter's rant, the trailer rants over in BitChute, if you want to see them. Uh, so I'm going to try to do like one a day. But, you know, the question is, what's next? What's next for these guys? You know, uh, the Yellow Flash is covering Amber Heard's train wreck of a, you know, she's being sued by Johnny Depp and seems to be losing. Which, you know, makes for a good video, but... What's next? What's next for comics? What's next for movies? What's next for entertainment? All I'm hearing is the negative. What is going to be tried in terms of the positive? I think some of it has to be digital, uh, at least. Look, uh, you know, some of the comic creators aren't too big on digital. I don't blame them. You know, it's hard to monetize in digital. It really is. I, I, I'm, I'm with you there. But if you want people to see your stuff, I think, you know, it needs to be there. And also, you know, the paper stuff needs to be there too right now. We still need to sort of bridge that gap and find a way to monetize everything. But uh, it's really hard to compete. I mean, I get it. It's hard to compete online where you got animators online doing moving stuff and, and stuff with sound. And you just have a comic that people read online. I mean, it's a little different. It's a lot different, really. I mean... You know, even if you're just doing these short tunes, I do, uh, I watch uh, Freedom Tunes. And uh, that's a fun little little shorts that he does. And even those, you know, I tend to watch those, Cyanide and Happiness, I tend to watch that stuff more 
than I read any comics online. And I'm a comic guy. Part of that is the whole webcomic thing kind of died out. There's very few of us hanging on. Uh, there's a lot of guys who have just, they just closed up shop. Their, their sites are dead. I haven't seen them in years. Uh, a lot of guys are still hanging on. Um, we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary. In fact, 10 years, we're going to uh, have our big live stream on Friday on the anniversary, me and Christian. Uh, it's going to start around 8.30. So make sure you check that out. We're going to talk exclusively about web comics and more specifically about the web comic factory and all our many, many uh, uh, projects on there. Um, what are we going to do for the future? Well, we're going to continue with the web comics. Uh, we're going to continue trying to get them into print, doing uh, crowdfunding and whatnot. But, you know, it's a difficult time to crowdfund. And now with the guys from Marvel and DC, they look like they're going to start heading to crowdfunding. Already Todd McFarlane did a crowdfunding, made a million bucks for Spawn Toys. I mean, if a guy like him is crowdfunding, which is a huge pay cut for him, I imagine, that's going to be really... That competition's going to get very, very tight in the crowdfunding world. And uh, I think a lot of these big names are going to push out the little guys. And what was the crowdfunding for? The crowdfunding was for the little guys. It was for new people to get involved. So where is the new stuff going to happen? I would hope that the comic skaters don't make the same mistake that the big guys made. I hope they invest in new. They need to invest in some new stuff. You know, now that we've kind of proven that the woke stuff doesn't work, let's explore some new. And uh, again, I'm totally biased in this. Hire writers. We need writers. I'm glad to see your boy Zach hire Chuck Dixon to write his uh, Expendables uh, graphic novel. I think that'll be well worth a read. Sounds good. I think more writers... Not necessarily big names, but talented guys. Guys who have written books. Guys who have written all, uh, screenplays. Guys who have good writing skills. And you can tell good writing skills if you take the time to read. The problem with a lot of the big guys, especially in L.A., now that they're on in L.A., forget about it, but they just didn't want to read. Very few people want to read now. Uh, it's just the way it is. They just want to know, what have you done? What have you done? What's your hits? What's your hits? How many people? How many Twitter followers? Uh, now, the comic ga gators aren't like that, but uh, they need to do what these other big companies did. Not that they're that big, but they're, they're growing. I think they need to really uh, take a page out of the Gene Roddenberry book. Gene Roddenberry, where he, when he started Star Trek, he hunted down some of the best science fiction writers ever, and he hired them even though some of them were a pain in the ass. Uh, he hired them to write these amazing episodes of Star Trek. And that's part of the reason the original series is so amazing. It's part of the reason it's endured all this time. Todd McFarlane did it with a couple issues of Spawn. A few issues, early issues of Spawn. Didn't quite work out the same way, but it was a good move. Some of those early issues are really, really super good. Uh, I wish uh, Todd would hire more, more guys like that, but... You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. I would like to see better writing. Better writing from comics. That's what we need in this new era of comics. Uh, I can help you. <laughs> I'd be happy to help you. I'd be happy to show you why. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I'm only one guy and uh, I'm not that famous. Not that successful. I did work for Bongo. I mean, so that's a, that's a tough gig. It's a tough gig to be funny. So uh, I offer my services, but if not, please continue down the Chuck Dixon path. Continue to seek out good writers to really drill down. And, and, and some of it, you got to set aside your ego. And that's tough to do, I know. You got a character and you got a creation. And you don't want to go to certain places with it. I get it. And there are guys you got to keep on a short leash. You don't want to do Gotham High crap or, you know, you don't want to marry off Superman or have Batman finally have sex with Catwoman. Those things are a non-starter uh, from a writing standpoint if you're going to think long term. So I get it, but it's really time that the comic book industry and the movie industry and the TV industry, all the industries, all the entertainment industries look to writers to think more, 
to be smarter and really create the kind of long-term franchises that we need because that kind of fan loyalty is going to pay off in the long run. And speaking of fan loyalty, check out my books, Wokistan and Novel, and of course the Pioneers books 1, 2, 3, and 4 available at Amazon.com, ebook, trade paperback, Kindle Unlimited is free. And of course the Webcomic Factory is celebrating 10 years of webcomics. Today is Thursday. Check out Pandemonium and uh, at Superfrat, superfrat.com, there's a new strip. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.